Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. Now in the background, what you are seeing is the International Space Stations. And yes, those solar panels did just move. This thing is absolutely incredible. Although it's not very detailed on the inside and it's not very practical, it's still exceptionally impressive to look at. And yes, those solar panels are following the sun's rotation as best as it can. So what does the International Space Station hold? Well, giant bloody solar panels for one, in case you couldn't see them. You're never going to run out of power with this thing. It's absolutely insane the amount of solar panels on it. As for the defence, there is no defence on it because it's the International Space Station. There is no aliens in our timeline that's going to attack our ships, so there's no need for any kind of defence. But what about driving it? Can you drive it? Yes you can. Is it practical? No it is not and I'll show you that a little bit later on. Now if I bring up the HUD and make sure I have the H turned on because it's going to get very confusing. There's going to be a lot of flipping and turning around while I'm inside the space station so it could get a little bit headachey for you just for a little bit of warning. So to get into the space station we need to go basically over to this signal and around one of these sides there will be a guest door over here. It took me an exceptionally long time to work this out that there was a door over here because there's so many doors everywhere but most of them are locked. So as we come into the space station I am going to keep my jetpack on for the moment. As soon as we open this door, that door closes. That's very nice. I like it when spaceships do that type of thing. And now we've got a choice of left, right and forwards. And you can see looking around this room it's going to get very complicated very very quickly. So over here that's where we want to go later on and over this way ugh, it's so confusing isn't it. So this door is like the same as that door we came in it's just another exit and let's go this way because we've got to go back the other way at some point. So over this way we have some more doors these doors cannot open up and you can see they are locked there they are just there for aesthetic purposes although you can if you really wanted to go into their menu and change them to be active. Although I wouldn't because you'll lose a lot of oxygen. Then as we come all the way over to here we have the very end here. These doors are, I think these doors work. They might not work. No, I think these doors are also locked. And then we have a nice little sign here. This is basically telling you about the whole script thing. About how these solar panels are moving on. But I don't need to read that. So now we need to fly all the way to the opposite end. I'm doing this as best I can to make sure you don't get dizzy from me doing this. Now there's a double door there, I don't know why but still it's pretty cool. It can be annoying when you're trying to like open it and close it and then you get pushed away. Over here we have an oxygen generator like in this nice little cubby corner. I do like this corner though, this, this corner is quite nice but of course I don't have oxygen, air tightness and all that turned on in the settings for this. So we have of course cargo containers with nothing in them and we got batteries, we got the cryopods in here in case you want a quick recharge. And as we come further along here, we have a left and a right. Over here, I believe, is the assembler. If we come to this side. Yep, we have the assembler. And as we come all the way down to the opposite side, I believe we have the dismantler. Yeah, there we go. There's the blast furnace over on this side. So you are set up to be able to survive in this space station. It's going to be very cramped in here. It does support up to four players. The developer was very nice to put four cryopods in here. One thing I will mention, if you get into the cryopod, like so, and then get out again, it will disable your jetpack, so you need to press X to reactivate it. Now hopefully I am the right way up, because we need to find the observation deck. This is going to be the hardest part of this entire video, because we're looking for one way that goes up into a special area, but whether I am facing upwards or not is a complete different question. So back at the entrance of how we got it in the guest entrance, if we continue along down here to the other side, we'll then have a little observation area. As you can see there, there goes the solar panels going around to make sure they catch all the sun where possible. The whole station is itself moving, but now what I'm going to do is firmly put my feet on the ground, try and work out which way is forwards. I believe we need to be facing this side and now we can press I and then we have access to this. So we have the International Space Station which we can then remote access and control. So as you can see there, now we have basically complete control over it. Trying to work out which way is forwards however is still a bit of a nightmare. So there we are, I am tilting the station and we are going around and around and around. This might break the solar panels, that's one thing. 
So yeah, I'm gonna just hop out of that and just leave it there. As you can see there, now we are spinning around and around. But that is basically how you control it. There is no traditional way of controlling the station, unless I am completely missing something, which I could be. But still, it's an absolutely fantastic little build. And I do recommend you playing it if you want a bit of realism in your world, or perhaps you just want a space station hovering around the Earth-like planet for whatever reason. So that is it for this video, it will be in the description below if you want to try it yourself, and I'll be back with another Space Engineers video somewhere soon. Bye bye.